I've always known that that task was vital. Since last week, it has become even more vital than ever. We close our conference in the aftermath of that sinister utopia unveiled at Blackpool. Let Labour's Orwellian nightmare of the left be the spur for us to dedicate with a new urgency our every ounce of energy and moral strength to rebuild the fortunes of this free nation. If we were to fail, that freedom could be imperiled. So let us resist the blandishments of the faint hearts. Let us ignore the howls and threats of the extremists. Let us stand together and do our duty and we shall not fail. There we go. I have no idea how long um, how long this has taken so far. I don't even know if it's recording properly. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. What does it feel like to have just delivered that speech? It feels it feels weird. Uh, it feels like I uh, I do understand a little bit more about her mindset, Margaret Thatcher's mindset. I do. Uh, I have a much clearer sense, just having said it out loud, of the rhythm and the, the pace and the, the sort of the chunks of the speech. I know that the beginning was much more um, grand philosophical view. Then there's quite a long stretch of that we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. This is the state of the world. This is the state of the world. Um, and then a sort of a, a rousing finale. Um, so that reading it aloud really makes that clear in my mind in a way that reading it in my head didn't. It gives me a sense of how she handled that short interruption. It gives me a sense of the rhythm of the longer sentences that are punctuated by these, these short, ringing, pithy statements. It really makes clear to me why that line about the ladies not fraternity was put in there because it was just absolutely designed to be the TV soundbite. I mean, it was it was like this is the sentence that sounds so unusual and and sort of richly strange that also conveys the whole point of the sentence, which is we are going to carry the, the, the speech as a whole, which is we're going to carry on with our plan you know, despite calls for us not to do this anymore. So um, does it make me like her anymore? I don't know. And a long time has passed since 1980. Um, I feel actually quite like uh, hindsight is one of those things that, you know, those, those changes that she introduced happened. There's no point wishing them away. And with hindsight and less of the panicky view in the moment, I don't think that the things that her opponents said against her were entirely realistic. It wasn't as bad as all that. And I also don't think that the things that she thought were marvellous were as marvellous as all that. So it all just seems slightly less important with the distance of time, not surprisingly. Um, and it's also unavoidably interesting to notice how some things have just completely switched. So she's asking the public sector to be a little bit more restrained in pay and benefits and pension plans so that the private sector doesn't suffer too much. And pretty well ever since we've heard exactly the opposite. Um, it's interesting to hear her talking about things that have just totally gone, Soviet communist regimes. And to, to, to hear her talking about engaging fiercely and robustly with a European community that we're glad to belong to, that's just, it's still hard to read that in light of Brexit without wanting to sort of snicker ironically. Anyway, those are just some thoughts. I also noticed some great rhetorical effects. So I'm going to try and go over the speech as a piece of writing shortly. That's all for now. Thank you.